Uh, right, Ireland's government has confirmed there will be no Irish police deployed to the border with Northern Ireland. Well, tensions between London and Dublin have increased over recent days after Ireland's Justice Minister claimed there'd been an upsurge in asylum seekers crossing the border as a result of the Rwanda bill being passed. Mm, well, let's speak now to Benedict Spence, who joins us this morning. He's a political commentator. Good to see you this morning, Benedict. So we see this tension rising, don't we, between Dublin and London. Where do you think we go from here? Ah, well, I suppose that's very tricky. It's, I mean, it, it's it's a bit of a godsend, I suppose, for Rishi Sunak to actually have uh, non-British politicians coming out and suggesting that his policy uh, might be having some sort of impact, uh, because obviously then he can turn around and say to all the naysayers in this country, ah, well, there you see, here's a respected European politician saying actually that it is having a deterrent, even if it's forcing people uh, into uh, into another country. The Irish government is, I think, in a very difficult situation in that it hasn't really prepared for any sort of influx in migrant numbers um, because it has never considered itself a, a country to which many people, a net number of people would move to. It's always been a net exporter of people, uh, very famously. Um, you, you combine that, I think, with the anger that there has been growing in parts of the Republic over large numbers of migrants uh, arriving and the behaviour of some of those migrants and the resources that are being uh, given to them. And I think you can see that it's a rather difficult situation. And Blaming the British government is a very easy way, I think, to curry favour in the Republic uh, 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 at the best of times, certainly on this. But the, you know, the, the efforts to move people back to the UK, efforts to put people, you know, police on the border, the, the Irish government has been a, gone to great lengths to say that, that a hard border on the island of Ireland would be unacceptable uh, for various different reasons. Uh, they can't, in all good conscience, turn around now and say a hard border is unacceptable, except for this very limited and specific thing that is you know, now beginning to affect us, um, which should be a, an EU-wide issue. Uh, in terms of returning people, the UK government has been very uh, uh, firm on this, which is that they're not going to accept people who have arrived in Ireland and have claimed asylum there, or at the very least, they're not going to do that until there are reciprocal agreements with other countries, specifically France. Uh, of course, election year in France, Emmanuel Macron is not polling particularly well. Migration is a very serious issue there. That's not going to be uh, a thing either. So I imagine, actually, that the Irish government finds itself in a very difficult situation where it is going to just have to, I think, suck it up a little bit and take a lot more people than it expected. It's also going to have to hope that Rishi Sunak is in fact right and that the Rwanda scheme does prove a deterrent and that the British government is able to limit the numbers of people crossing illegally into the UK via the channel, because ultimately that is how people are going to get to the Republic via that Northern Irish border. It's going to have to hope that Sunak is right and that they are able to stem the tide, because otherwise there will continue to be, it must be said, not a particularly large large number compared to other European countries, uh, but still a, a large enough number to cause real political pain in Ireland, I think. Yeah, but it is fascinating. I mean, you, you touched on it there, but this idea that the Irish government is saying we're enacting emergency legislation so we can send these people back to Britain, where mm. Britain can't send them back to France. I mean, the hypocrisy is, is quite something. It is. And it's actually it flies in the face slightly of what a lot of people, a lot of commentators say in this country, which is that Britain is almost alone in its desire to be beastly towards people who are coming. And, you know, uh, and, and that the Rwanda scheme is sort of uniquely awful. Actually, European countries in general are struggling with this issue. Lots of them are trying to come up with solutions to the problem. The Danish government came up with a, a hilarious wheeze a couple of years ago where it decided that even though it didn't legally recognize the government of Syria, it was going to decide that certain parts of Syria were safe so that it could deport people back. Uh, you know, th there have been other uh, agreements or attempts at agreements with other countries uh, to try to expatriate people to third nations for processing. A lot of European governments are looking at the Rwanda scheme rather carefully because they want to be able to weigh up the political cost to it to see whether or not they can implement something themselves. Now, the Republic, as I say, it's never really faced this issue before. But countries like uh, Germany and France are absolutely interested in seeing how this goes. Um, as you say, the hypocrisy there with a lot of uh, commentary saying that these sort of repatriation schemes are awful is tempered by political reality, which is 
that the numbers of people coming are proving incredibly unpopular in a lot of European countries, and the resources are being stretched too thin. There has to be a solution to this beyond simply let people in and put them up at the taxpayer's expense, because increasingly a lot of people are not happy to put up with that. Mm. Benedict, we can see that this is causing tension in the Republic of Ireland. We've seen protests there for the last week or so. Uh, how much do you believe in what the government is saying here, that this is because of the Rwanda scheme and it's working as a deterrent? I don't actually believe that that is why people are going to the Republic of Ireland. Ultimately, the Republic of Ireland is it's a safe country. People speak English there, so it has many of the benefits that the UK does. But actually, you don't have the same drain on resources relatively as you do in the UK. There hasn't been this sort of ongoing uh, process of people coming um, to the Republic. So it's sort of seen as slightly more fertile ground. We also have to remember, actually, that this uptick, it's not just happened in the last couple of months. It has been a gradually increasing process since 2021-22. Uh, it's only now that it's sort of reached a critical mass. Um, Ireland, I suppose, therefore, is paying the price for its own success. And we also have to remember, you know, if you're a migrant and you're, you're coming to Europe and you're trying to think, right, well, where would be a good place for me to be economically? Ireland has, Ireland has massaged its economic figures for some time via the fact that it is effectively a tax haven. Many large international corporations that want to operate in the Eurozone and the European Union base themselves in Ireland because of favourable tax situations. That boosts Ireland, the performance of Ireland's economy. Its GDP appears to be doing a lot better than it actually is. Why wouldn't people look at the Republic of Ireland and think, financially, that's not a bad place. It seems like a very wealthy country. Why have I never thought of this before? Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Uh, Benedict, good to see you this morning. Thank you.